Over the weekend, we learned that Democrats will retain control of the Senate and they are only projected to narrowly lose the House. But at the time that I record this video, that hasn't yet been called. But even if we don't know the results of all of the House elections that took place on Tuesday, well, that didn't stop Marjorie Taylor Greene from conspiracy mongering about the election, tweeting, are we allowed to say, quote, slowly stolen election on Twitter now? Now, I'm assuming she's asking this question to Elon Musk, even if she didn't at him because apparently Apparently, you weren't allowed to talk about the election being stolen before he took over Twitter, even though that's what you did. So it's just really idiotic of her to do this and to answer her question. No, you can't unless you have any evidence. You can't just say things and proclaim them to be true if you have zero evidence to back up your claim. Just because it's taking long to count the votes, which is frustrating, I admit, doesn't mean that these elections are stolen. There's a plethora of races where the slow counts are going in the Republicans' direction. I mean, take Lauren Boebert's district in Colorado's 3rd Congressional District, for example, here. So she was currently losing, but as more votes are counted, she's gaining on Adam Frisch. And though we don't know the results of that election, it just kind of goes to show you that that alone should dismiss this idea that if the election count is slow, that means that it's being rigged for Democrats. That's nonsensical. And I am sad to report that lots of Republicans across the country who are election deniers did indeed end up winning their races. But nevertheless, I've got to say, I'm pleasantly surprised by the behavior of many Republicans after this election. And I know that you're probably shocked to hear me say that, so let me repeat it. I am pleasantly surprised and happy to be proven wrong by election deniers, many election deniers, not all of them, but many. And I say that because I, as well as many others, were really anticipating a huge cluster F after this election was over, because if you have all of these Trump sycophants running for office claiming that the election was stolen, well, what's going to happen if they lose? Will they concede? Will we see many stop the steal shit shows across the country? And it turns out that's not actually the case. And I've never been more happy to be proven wrong. So that tells us that all of these claims about election fraud was nothing more than bluster, nothing more than Republicans trying to please Daddy Trump so they can get his endorsement ahead of their elections. But ultimately, they're not claiming that the election was stolen. So it was stolen for Trump, but not for them. And this indicates that Republicans slowly but surely are beginning to move away from election denialism. Now, why is this? Well, first of all, it turns off independents who don't want to support a party that is attacking our democracy. Second of all, it suppresses the GOP base. So I want to share this now viral TikTok from a Republican who's going to explain why he's never voting again. You know, in all reality, I don't have no reason to bitch anymore because uh, the other day I chose not to vote. And I'm never going to vote again anymore in the remainder of my lifetime, however that must be. Main reason is because uh, back in 2020, as far as I'm concerned, I lost all faith in the integrity of the voting system when my vote and your vote was basically stolen and the goddamn election was stolen as well by that damn asshole Biden. So you know what? I ain't voting no more. And now you got the GOP falling apart, falling apart, crumbling like a goddamn avalanche. They don't even know what the hell they're doing anymore. They just about as crooked as a goddamn den, as far as I'm concerned. I ain't never gonna vote again in my life, and you know what? I really don't give a shit. Good. Please don't, Grandpa. In fact, tell all of your friends at Bingo Night not to vote as well. Because to me, I view this as a victory. Let the younger voters actually determine their future after you already ruined it for them. Um, now listen. I think it's pretty obvious that telling voters that their votes don't matter because the elections were rigged was probably not the best motivator, but nonetheless, it happened. And it's evident to Republicans who want a career in politics that they can't continue to champion this message if they want a future in politics, because voters aren't going to support you if you tell them that elections don't matter. And as a result, some of the loudest election deniers this cycle, who even wouldn't admit that they would concede, ended up conceding quietly and they're not crying fraud. As Politico reports, many of the nation's most outspoken 2020 election deniers are staying quiet or conceding defeat after their own election losses this cycle. One of the most notable examples is Matthew DiPerno, who was running to become Michigan's top law enforcement officer. Trump had taken an outsized interest in DiPerno's race for attorney general and even held a fundraiser for him at his Mar-a-Lago resort. DiPerno, who remains under investigation for allegedly tampering with voting machines, conceded to the current attorney general, Dana Nessel, 
after losing by nearly nine percentage points. Trump backed Tudor Dixon, who was vying for Michigan governor and had previously refused to commit to accepting the results of her race, also conceded her loss. So too did Tim Michaels, the Wisconsin election denier who claimed Republicans would never lose another election if he were elected governor. On Sunday, Pennsylvania gubernatorial candidate Doug Mastriano, who championed efforts to overturn Biden's 2020 victory in the state, also conceded. Other losing Republicans who spread conspiracies about the 2020 election, including Nevada Secretary of State nominee Jim Marchant, have yet to concede their losses, but they have not claimed that fraud or misconduct was responsible for their defeats. Now, that's just some examples, but there are many more. So what's happening? There's a couple of things that's happening. I alluded to the fact that they're realizing that this isn't a winning message for them. But second of all, what's happening is that you see this shift away from Donald Trump. Now, I don't necessarily know if the media who's currently trying to goad the GOP's base into supporting DeSantis over Trump is going to be successful in doing that. Early polling indicates that that is indeed at least somewhat successful or very successful, depending on the poll that you look at. But either way, if these Republicans want to run for Congress again, and they also simultaneously see that Trump may no longer be the standard bearer, then they don't have to toe the line anymore. They don't have to pretend as if the election was stolen. They can concede, go quietly into the night, and come back in a couple of years, just copying whatever DeSantis says now, using his talking points, assuming he is able to become the new GOP standard bearer. But regardless of why this is happening, I'm very pleasantly surprised to see this happening because this is very, very good for democracy. I was absolutely dreading this election and any other election, assuming that all of these election deniers would cry fraud, but they're not doing that. And that's that's really good. That's a really positive step. So I don't give Republicans credit very often, but I do give them credit for conceding here and being grownups. I know that I shouldn't have to give them credit for doing the bare minimum, but you've got to understand, folks, the bar is very low. It's below the floor at this point. So if they refuse to concede, that would be horrible, but they're not. So I, I've got to give them credit for not continuously attacking our democracy. Now, that's not to say that democracy is safe. Trump could still run again. In fact, he will likely run again, and he could win. On top of that, we still see more v. Harper with the Supreme Court. That will determine whether or not they will empower state legislatures across the country to steal elections. But this is a very positive sign. Republicans are getting the message that voters do not accept election denialism and that it's toxic, not just to independents, but to your own base who feel demoralized and feel as if their votes don't matter. So even if individuals like Marjorie Taylor Greene are going to continue to fearmonger about the election, she can do that because she's in a plus like 150% GOP district. I'm being hyperbolic, of course, but like she's not going to lose her seat. But it may very well be the case that soon Marjorie Taylor Greene is not representative of the average GOP politician. And that's a really encouraging sign. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.